Hi there, I'm Jamie Taylor. Welcome to Your Health Matters, brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center, your community-owned hospital. If you've watched this show before, you know that each week I have a guest on the program that talks about a different program or service that we offer here at KRMC that I think will be of interest to you and your family. So stay tuned. I've got an exciting guest on the program today. We'll be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is Patrick Oberloyer. Did I say that right? You certainly did. I got did. it. Yay. You did. <laughs> Very good. Patrick, you work in the imaging center, at the imaging center here at KRMC, yes. in the MRI portion. So you're an MRI technologist? Yes, I am an MRI technologist. Wow, that's pretty cool. And I've had one done. That's how I met you the first time, not too long ago. And that was what I've got to have you on this show because this is really cool. Speaking of the, how are you doing? Um, well, it's getting better. You know, Pretty it's good. still a little swollen, but I'm getting better now good. that they figured out what it was. You know, from the, the MRI. Yeah, because it wasn't a well, it was a sprain on my ankle. For those of you that don't know, I sprained my ankle, being the graceful person that I am. But I also broke off the tip of the tibia, and that's why mm. it wasn't healing. Cause, Very painful. Yeah, and because I kept treating it like a sprain. <laughs> Amazing when you treat the true problem, how it gets better. But that was a very cool experience for me because I never had an MRI before. Oh, I, that was your first one? That was my first yeah. time, very first you did time. great. Yeah, well, great. I think I had a great technologist that walked me through it too. Oh, that helped a lot. I try. And you did a great job. So it was over at the Imaging Center, mm -hmm. which is right there in the corner of Western and Sycamore, our awesome imaging center. It's such a beautiful yeah. building. It's a very nice place. Yeah, and pretty cool facilities we have over there. So let's talk, what does MRI stand for to begin with for my audience? They might not know. Um, simply magnetic resonance imaging. Okay, so that's, yeah. It. yeah, okay, MRI, that makes sense. So it's giant magnets, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> oh, well, it's, it's a superconducting magnet. Uh, there's several different kinds of magnets. Uh, well, what we have at the hospital and at the imaging center are superconducting magnets, meaning within the bore of the magnet, the temperature is almost absolute zero by the so use cold. of cold. Yeah, exactly. Colder than but, it's been a Kingman lately. Well, yeah, <laughs> through the use of liquid helium as a cryogen, okay. and what that does to create that state of uh, superconductivity is virtually eliminates the resistance to the flow of electrons through the coils of wire within the bore of the magnet. And okay. that's what takes the pictures. Uh, um, and. Uh, <laughs> There's a little kind more of? to it than yeah, that, but okay. that's how we create the, the superconductivity, okay? okay? We use the magnetic field in conjunction with uh, radio frequency pulses to actually produce the images. And they're, they're both on gradients. There's RF gradients and there's magnetic field gradients. Okay. Basically, the uh, magnetic field is uh, on a gradient, stronger at one end, weaker at the other, and it allows you to spatially encode information and data. Okay. So when we're changing those gradients on and off, that's when you hear the loud knocking sounds. And depending on what type of contrast we want to produce, it changes the sound you're hearing in there. Because it's not just one picture that you're taking. I would take several. Uh, I did a case yesterday that was almost a thousand images. Wow. So, yeah. How long did that take? Well, the parts of it that... Uh, produced the most images didn't take long, oh. oddly enough. They're 3D volumes, and they're very thin. They're slabs. They're acquired as a slab, and then it's reconstructed into submillimeter thick slices. So, so. it almost like cuts away yeah, down can, into yeah. the body. And, I mean. Yeah, in a nutshell, it <laughs> collects all the data in a slab, and then the, the computer, you pre-program it to post-process it into the thickness you want. The thinner the slice, the higher the resolution, mm -hmm. the more well, stealthy pathology that you can pick up on. So. so, I mean, like in my case, I just had an MRI in my ankle that was pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, Ankle's a complex joint, though. There's oh, a lot, 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 lot going on in the I joint. I know you took lots of pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to make sure I had good makeup on, but <laughs> 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 just on my ankle. But I know that with MRIs, there's a lot of, I mean, you can do the whole body with an MRI, right? Yes, not all at once, but no. we can do every part of the yeah, body, yes. Yeah, and that, so what is the norm, or not the normal, but the average maybe of the type of patient that you're seeing? Are they looking for 
tumors, or what are they looking for usually when you have an uh, MRI? Yeah. Neurological findings, anything in the brain, okay. um, uh, cranial nerves, uh, uh, spine, you know, herniated disc, spinal okay. stenosis. All those kind of things are going to show. Facet hypertrophy of the, of the lumbar spine and C-spine. Um, any musculoskeletal work, um, your ankle would mm -hmm. be considered MSK. Okay. Um, shoulders, elbows, wrists, and that's one of the advantages of the three Tesla magnet. Um, I, was, I was just going to ask you about that. So it's three Tesla MRI. That's even more, or something. Yes. Well, uh, you know, for years, 1.5 was the the gold standard, and it, it still is. Still produces outstanding images. Um, mm -hmm. They both shine at different things. Um, Currently on the 1.5, they're doing all the breast imaging at the hospital. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're they're about even, according to Dr. Johansson, and, and their capacity. The difference is at the hospital they have that software already to right. do that, okay. so that's why they do those there. Okay. Um, with respect to uh, the small parts, three Tesla, you can get a lot of signal with a very small field of view. The analogy I would use is if you take a picture of something up close and mm -hmm. you can actually say a newspaper you can read the writing on it if you get way back and take a picture of it and have a large field of view you, you can yeah. tell it's a newspaper but you can't you know see depict any people. sort of detail or oh, resolution that's a good analogy that. So that makes sense it works it yeah. works and okay. um, with the three tesla magnet you have about uh, roughly twice the amount of signal coming from uh, the part mm -hmm. that produces the image so okay. You can utilize thinner slices, uh, smaller field of views. So, so it really shines really see in like a neuro. Glass of yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it, it shines in neuro and, and musculoskeletal imaging okay. for the most part, which is any joint, mm -hmm. you know, shoulders, knees, elbows, so you can actually, like, spines, see inside it brains. Almost kind of. Absolutely. You see all the ligaments, like when they did ah. when we did your ankle. Uh -huh. I'm sure the radiologist. Uh, uh, evaluated every tendon and uh, yeah. ligament yeah, they in your ankle. It up good. <laughs> did did you did they happen to mention any specific ligaments or tendons? Like oh, well, they might have, but I think it kind of went. I don't remember yeah. what it was, but <laughs> yeah. but I I just know that it's on both sides of the well, ankle. Yeah. You know, I know you held still. That's the most important part. Yeah. From a technologist's perspective, <laughs> is that the well, patient holds still. still. and that's hard. I mean, I would think that there's got to be some patients. I mean. Someone like with ADHD, for instance, Scott Kern, who works for me, he couldn't sit still for that long. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a challenge. What do you do with people like that? Um, talk to them more, remind them, okay. give them breaks. You know, um, we can set up the scans and run them right through. If people don't mind, I'll talk to the patients in advance, mm -hmm. explain the procedure, the duration, et cetera. And, uh, if, if they're comfortable with it and just want to get it over with, I don't talk to them in between. They have their uh, alarm ball, their panic button, no. if you will. Right. So if they do have a problem, they can always squeeze it and get my attention because yeah. it's hard to hear them. And I think that's important for people to maybe we'll clarify that a little bit more because I remember you did that with me. You gave me the little ball and said, if at any time right, <laughs> you start right. freaking out, no, you didn't say that, but no, basically. No. Any you problems. <laughs> if you have any problems, you need to stop or you're, you know, Anything that isn't right, mm -hmm. you know, don't hesitate to squeeze the ball because it's, it's no big deal for us to pause the scan, address whatever your concern is, and if we need to, pull you out and talk to you. Okay. Um, make you more comfortable if possible. The thing with MRI, though, is once we do the first set of images, all the rest of our scans are based off that first set. So oh. if we're doing a lumbar spine, okay, slices uh -huh. down the lumbar spine, and in between one of the sets of pictures, someone decides they're not comfortable and they, and they move go up. like this, ah. we're basically starting over. Oh, wow. So, but I explain all that to people. Yeah, I mean, right. I'm, I'm pretty sure I explained everything yeah, to you, you as well. Yeah, and you did. Like I said, I think that makes a huge difference when our um, technician explains up front, because ed it's education. If someone knows mm -hmm. what they're going to experience and why they're going to experience what right. they're doing, right. It makes it easier for them, and that's kind of what I try to do on the show: is have people like yourself in, so it can kind of put their fears at ease before they even experience it. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah I think it's very helpful. Very yeah, it helpful. does. It makes a big difference. Now, I recall in the past hearing about, like with MRIs, that you have to be very careful um, with things that are metal, right? Because mm -hmm. it is a magnet, so 
it can mm -hmm. suck things to it, yeah. right? Exactly. The you know you have uh, ferrous objects, uh, magnetic objects, paramagnetic objects. Um, basically, the mass of the object and the proximity to the magnet are, are very important. Like you know, a small key or something, uh, like your locker key. We have uh -huh. people set those on the window, so they're fine. You know, I, that wouldn't feel any other force until you get right in front of the bore of the magnet. Okay. But uh, we like to keep the um, magnet free of any metal for several reasons. Safety purposes, things can become projectiles, mm -hmm. um, uh, artifacts, it messes up the images. Okay. Um, oh, okay. We get what's called a magnetic susceptibility artifact where we won't see something because there's metal around it. Oh. So, like, say. So, if you've had like a metal knee replacement? Um, around that, we don't see things as clearly. So, if things are metal in your body, like a knee replacement, mm -hmm. it used to be metal, not so much maybe anymore, but would that right. block the image? Uh, it can cause artifacts. The older the implants are, the, the more impurities in them, and, and you do see what's called, again, a magnetic susceptibility artifact sometimes. Uh, okay. People who have had ACL repairs, right. you'll, you'll see where the femur was bored into and the tibia as well. But I you can still, excuse. yeah, they can still evaluate um, the meniscus, the oh, okay. medial collateral ligaments, lateral collateral ligaments, okay. and the bone around it to see if It'll there's any bone. Show. Yeah, yeah, okay. you can get but around it. I didn't think, well, those are the metal things, too, when you go at the airport, go through security, and they'll set off the alarm thing. Yes, and I have people with knee replacements set off our uh, metal detector. You walk oh, through a metal oh, detector. Oh, that's right, yeah. Did you set it off? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think I have anything metal in me. Some people just set it off, and there's... Oh, just magnetic bang. personalities, I guess so. maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so let's, okay, let's step back a sec and walk through the process. So I get a referral... To have an MRI done, and I call, actually the imaging center called me to schedule the appointment, mm -hmm. and I come in, and they send me to the back, and you meet me, and you take me back to the room where you explain you got to get rid of all metal, anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then, what else happens? Remind me, how does that process work? Well, basically, once I I greet the patient, introduce myself, um, explain the test. I kind of do that while I'm looking over the paperwork to see if there's mm -hmm. any surprises or anything. Typically I do it the day before as well, but usually something, there's, there's more to the story than is on the paper. So sure. I, I interview the personal. patient and I find okay. out a little bit of history from them in their own words. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we'll pick that up. I think it'll be good to walk a patient through. I think okay. that's excellent. So All we'll right. be back right after these messages. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today, Patrick, the MRI technologist over at the Imaging Center. Patrick, before the break, we were talking about if I was a patient, we kind of were walking through from the time I get to the Imaging Center what to expect. And I know from my experience there that you come and you greet the patient. You've already kind of gone over their records. Mm -hmm. But then you're going to explain to them I'll explain the test to them, what they can expect, um, try to alleviate any fears they have. And at that time, they're also locking up all their valuables. Hopefully, okay. they don't bring a lot of stuff yeah. with them. That always <laughs> helps. you have little lockers yeah. they can put in. Exactly. And uh, we go back to the MRI area. They walk through the metal detector. Okay. And, that was, yeah. and we, you know, I explain, continue explaining the test and the duration of the test to them and get them on the table and position properly and start the scan basically okay. any any questions they have though i'm always uh, any questions at yeah, all I, I say it several I times i didn't feel rushed at all you no know, and, and you know let's face it when it people good. come in they they're there well, because yeah sure it's, it, it, so you want to try to put them at ease and yeah. if you can um in a tasteful way, joke around with them a little mm -hmm. bit, get them to lighten the mood because they have some apprehension about sure. the results of their test as well as having the test. So um, I try to do that. And I also try to make sure, I really emphasize with patients, let me know if you're not comfortable. Mm -hmm. Don't feel like it's gonna, you know, you're gonna be pestering me because yeah. you're not comfortable. I want you to be perfectly comfortable. Otherwise, we're not gonna get a high quality study. Sure. Now I have to admit, I was just thinking about this. When I was laying on the table after we'd started procedures and you'd explain it after lay still and you know all that whole thing, and afterwards I was like, "What about? I've got fillings in my teeth. Will that MRI like pull?" Well, we have people? pliers, <laughs> so we can just pull those out okay. before we put you in. <laughs> but if I basically if it didn't set off 
the metal detector, I'm good, right? For the most part. For <laughs> okay. the most part. Because yeah. I, I remember laying on the table going, oh, I've got a lot of fillings. I've yeah. heard. <laughs> Yeah, people there's ask the, you about that? yeah, they do. There's okay. uh, there's a lot of um, confusion about things with right. respect to that. I mean, if we're imaging, uh, let's say we're imaging My your head. salivary glands, yeah. okay, because okay. we do that as well. Wow. Um, if you have a bunch of fillings around uh, the parotid gland or one of the yeah. salivary glands, it can mess up the images a little bit. So, you and know. then what do you do? Pull the I, teeth out. No. <laughs> there are certain pulse sequences we can run that okay. uh, minimize that artifact. Now, when, we're get, when you're having that MRI done, are you getting like radiation? That's another thing that people always worry about, right? No, no, there's absolutely no radiation. It's that's a whole a, different thing. Yeah, a combination of uh, radio frequency pulses with uh, a superconducting magnetic field. So. Okay. So it's yeah. totally different. Absolutely. Uh, no known biological effects, and it's been in existence now for quite some time. Really? So they would how, know. how long's? Uh, early to mid-80s. Okay, so over 20 not, years, yeah, probably. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah So long enough that definitely. there's going to have some side effects that yeah. have noticed yeah. it by now. Yeah. So, like, if I'm claustrophobic or a really big person, you know, we've, I've heard about, they call the open MRI. What is that mm -hmm. literally? Is it your... Well, they're really not open, actually. Um, basically, they would look similar to uh, some Nuke Med cameras. I mean, uh, you lie on it, it's um, round, and it'll have some uh, towers on each side, and then it's like being in a crawl space, okay? Mm -hmm. You still have it exactly. there. The difference is if, if, you're, if they're not imaging your brain, you could turn your head and see out. The downside, and this is just my personal opinion mm -hmm. of open magnets, I, I used to work for GE, and I did some training on the open magnets, mm -hmm. trained customers on them as well. And um, typically they're lower field strengths. If they are higher field strengths, which in my opinion equates to a better quality image, the higher the field strength. So the lower the field strength, the less the quality of the image. Makes sense. You know, they have to yeah. use thicker slices, larger field of views. So the image quality is does not. Does it take longer then? And it, it also does take, take longer. longer. Now, there are some uh, newer systems that are, you know, one Tesla magnets mm -hmm. that are okay. open. Um, I don't know of where any are around oh, here. Around, yeah, no, okay. So absolutely they're not. still pretty new. Any of the thing. magnets that are open around here, uh, if I'm not mistaken, are around 0.3, wow. 0.3 That's Tesla. We're operating at, at three, three Tesla. Three, like 3.0 yeah. versus 0.3. Exactly. So that's so a big difference. It's a huge difference, yeah. yeah. So the images you get are, but um, what, do, I mean, what would be an instance where a person would have to do an open versus a closed? Currently, our uh, table limits for weight are 350 pounds. That's pretty big. It, it is. Much um, bigger. Yeah. You know, the, sometimes the challenge can be, you know, how that weight is distributed. Mm -hmm. If somebody's five foot four and weighs 300 pounds, most likely the aperture is going. They're not going to fit. Yeah. If they're uh, six foot ten and 350 pounds, they shouldn't have a problem. Okay. Okay. So it's height and weight. Okay. Do you have way. people like with claustrophobia that get real freaked out and we, can't we do that? We do. There's different levels of it. I have people with mild anxiety that I can mm -hmm. talk through the test. Mm -hmm. um, I can use certain techniques and help them out. Um, if that doesn't work, then it's up to them to discuss it with their doctor mm -hmm. and, and you know decide what option and what course they want to follow. They can. Their doctor could prescribe them. Um, uh, mild anti-anxiolytic, like a, a sedative, mild Relaxation. sedative, um, orally, and uh, that usually takes care of it. Maybe if not, you need to learn hypnosis. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that would work. <laughs> that might be a side talent for you. can also do uh, uh, conscious sedation with a nurse over at the hospital, oh, and, and they're okay. monitored. They're almost completely out. Um, mm -hmm. In my opinion, it's rare that someone really needs that. That's so um, yeah. yeah. And then there are people that just, period, aren't going to have one, mm -hmm. and they go end up going to an open magnet okay. or not getting an MRI yeah. at all. But. How now? Like, I don't remember how long it took, but I know it did take a while for my MRI. What is? I mean, obviously, it depends on what you're taking mm -hmm. the pictures of mm -hmm. too. But what's an average length? Do you think for an MRI? Well, 
an exam without contrast, uh, I'm going to say if the patient cooperates, mm -hmm. the actual yeah. table time is about 25 minutes from when you start hearing the knocking and the gradients mm -hmm. working till when I'm pulling you out and we're done. It's about 25 minutes. Okay. But there's prep time, you know, you spend right. five yeah. to 10 minutes getting the patient ready, sometimes 20. Mm -hmm. It just it varies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of variables, yeah. you know, everyone's needs are different. Well, and and again, probably what you're taking the pictures of. And that, how you have to position that, exactly, them and getting exactly. comfortable. Some uh, procedures are more complex and re require more um, uh, thought on the technologist's part and more cooperation on the patient's mm -hmm. part. So there are things that take longer, but um, average without contrast, I would say about 25 minutes okay. of actual table time. Right, right. Not to be mistaken with how long you're going to be <laughs> at the facility. Minutes. Right, yeah. Because typically for not contra no contrast studies, we tell people 45 minutes. Okay. And, and the difference between no contrast and contrast, okay. so contrast is longer? Contrast would be longer. What the contrast does is it's, it's not like the contrast used in CT. CT is x-ray and it, they use an iodinated based right. contrast, yeah. which is radiopaque and absorbs the radiation. We don't have radiation. What we do is decrease T1 relaxation times with what's called gadolinium, a gadolinium compound. Okay. Okay, so we'll pull you out, um, do the pre-contrast stuff, sequences if you will, and then give you the injection. It's a very inert, benign substance. Mm -hmm. I've never had anybody have a reaction mm -hmm. from it. So um, people who are allergic to iodine need not worry typically about gadolinium injections. Okay. Then we'll put you back in the scanner and run a few more sequences and you're done. Okay. So, and you know what we forgot to mention? What's that? That another thing you do to help the patients be comfortable is the headsets. You get to you have music, and so you don't hear all that loud, or not as much. You don't hear the loud right. knocking, and that helps a lot too. It does. Yeah, for an ankle, knee, um, hips, pelvis, yeah. stuff like that, it, it works real well. Um, when it gets up probably closer to you. Well, ears, yeah, the yeah. the lumbar spine, uh, a coil as we call them. Like if we're doing spine work, we use a coil, okay, and it's basically an antenna. You're lying on it, and um, there's a part that comes up close to your head, so when we image the spine, we get good signal-to-noise mm -hmm. ratios. And you're going to um, hear it a lot more then. Well, the headphones oh, don't get in the fit. Way. Ah. It would squeeze your, yeah. uh, squeeze your head. And <laughs> the same thing for brain studies. Um, sure. People with a smaller head, I, I can get the headphones Any on there. earbuds? <laughs> yeah, well, we do have some other ones, but honestly, they, with the, the noise levels, yeah. they're better off um, with earplugs and ear pads, the combination oh. of both. Okay, um, to just block out the noise. Yeah, uh, to the best of our ability. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because it is it's pretty loud. I and you, mean, you had yeah. music? Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. You picked out a good CD for me. Yeah. It was, good mix CD. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> I enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people really like that CD. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. Well, it probably depends on our age, too. And yeah. yeah <laughs> we, we try to stray away from heavy metal and hard yeah, rock. Yeah, you're getting There's enough no Metallica of that. in there. Yeah, that's true. You're getting enough of the head banging. Yeah, it doesn't heavy work heavy out well, <laughs> really. Well, Patrick, thank you. First of all, I want to thank you again because oh, no my problems. MRI experience was awesome. And I want to make sure my listeners know that they don't have to be afraid. Because no. you have someone like you that's going to walk them through, hold their hand, and it will, I don't know if enjoyable experience is quite right, but it will not. Uh, frequently, frequently do have people go out of there laughing and say yeah, it wasn't I that did. bad. Yeah, so, I did. You know, so thank you. I appreciate you being on the show. Thanks I hope you guys me. learned something new today, too. And stay tuned next week. We'll have another great guest on the program. Take care. Mm -hmm.